Elder Gettys, I'm Kari, the Vacuum Chop Witch. And it's Snail Mail time at Karita Electronics again. I've got two packages. One is pretty small. This goes for the first unboxing. And this is a big one. <laughs> Clearly from someone who does electronics. The box is from TME. <laughs> and oh my goodness, it's so heavy. So, without further ado, let's get over to the bench. With the first package. You call that a knife? This is a knife. Initializing discombobulation procedure. There must be a way to get into this thing. There is always a way. And it, even though I have this huge as knife, I always try doing it in a pretty surgical way. Cut it here. Oh, the handle. some foam and yeah that's what she ordered wow <coughs> beautiful look at that know what it is we're gonna get onto this thing pretty soon. Made in Poland by Mega Lumel, a company that made uh, needle meters and test equipment, but also automation gear and relays. That's uh, for PDT uh, R15. Uh, Vintage relay, uh, 24 volt DC coil, and I will use uh, those relays. I've got, I've got 20 of them in this package. I ordered uh, 20 of those relays, and I will use them for my uh, matrix switcher for speakers um, project. I will be making in uh, Caritech 2.0 because uh, I've been thinking about making a device that could uh, patch um, three amplifiers into three pairs uh, of speakers and on top of that patching the, the bench uh, connection uh, in and the bench connection out, uh, like uh, connecting a, uh, any amplifier to the speakers that I'm uh, testing on the bench, or connecting the amplifier that I'm testing on the bench to any speakers. And uh, 16 of those would provide for four columns and four rows three of them for the speakers, uh, three columns, uh, three rows for the amplifier, and uh, an additional, an additional um, column uh, for dummy load, and also an uh, additional row for the band. 
So this is gonna be a pretty big project at Caritec Electronics. For this I've got this pretty big uh, vintage uh, free unit uh, rack enclosure. Let's take a look inside this enclosure. I've gutted it. Uh, it was from uh, a um, biological experimentation device uh, named a uh, shock generator. Sounds pretty creepy and uh, it's one of those um, questionable ethics uh, devices uh, that I got from the medical university. Possibly could have been used uh, for experimenting on live uh, subjects like uh, like rats. And that's uh, that's why I say uh, questionable ethics. <coughs> Having been a Half-Life fan for two and a half de decades. Oh, it was uh, it was the bottom part, but if you, if you take a look, uh, there's a uh, resin uh, plate on the back, and I can uh, use this plate plus some uh, standoffs uh, and and mounts. To attach uh, a bunch of relays uh, pretty comfortably, making them, uh, putting them above uh, the bottom of the chassis, and uh, then there would be a lot of wiring uh, to be done on on the underside of the of the relay bases those uh, those tabs uh, in the relay bases uh, they are staggered staggered pretty much like the control panels um, on the Apollo command module and I think that I might be able to use uh, this uh, staggered um, design <coughs> to attach the relay bases uh, to metal bars making uh, them uh, a uh, staggered uh, 4x4 grid or maybe a uh, non-staggered uh, 4x4 but then I would have to use uh, slightly wider bars I might use uh, aluminum uh, T-bars for that. I'd rather have a non-staggered de design. Pretty much like... Like this. By the way, those um, those bases, uh, they don't look identical. Um, some of them are glossy, some of them are white. Pretty interesting. So that's gonna be a big project. I won't be going through it uh, just like... Just like this, just right now. Wonder when when those uh, relays were made.
1978. There's a, there's a marking on the, on the top part uh, of uh, the solenoid bracket uh, that says that uh, the relay was made in 1978. So yeah, those things will be 45 years uh, old now. <laughs> Generation X relays. And now, here comes the second box. And if I am correct, <laughs> this is gonna be even more vintage than uh, the real lives. <coughs> Nicely packed. I never even knew that it was so huge. <laughs> Real dear vintage stuff. Look at that. It's a decade resistor box uh, made in Germany by Ulrich. Let's get this box off the bench. It's so huge! Look at those numbers. Uh, they're just so big. Then the box is made uh, of uh, of steel. Also, uh, that's why it's so heavy. There are markings. Uh, I or J or CHF. Uh, I think it might be some Institute of uh, Physical Chemistry. But I'm not exactly so sure. Type 119 slash 163. All those, all those markings. Uh, they are engraved uh, or embossed uh, in uh, the faceplate. There are also four screws in the corners. And the vacuum tube witch wouldn't be a vacuum tube witch if she didn't take it apart. Conico had uh, M3 schools. Eh, there's two more. A sign of good engineering. You just don't cut costs. Uh, you you use uh, as many screws uh, as you really need. Still not going, and I think that I will have to discombobulate all the all the knobs. 
all the knobs and all the binding posts. Uh, This might be a little bit harder than I thought. But we don't do things because they are easy, we do them because they are hard. The knob has two stabilizing screws, uh, grab screws with, uh, with an uh, conical, uh, conical endings that, um, that bites into the shaft. So it's all a matter of removing those six uh, knobs. Pesky little bugger. Now this and now I can lift the place the grounding binding posts are coupled with uh, with the face plate there are there are plastic windows uh, showing the digits uh, on the scales. This is made of aluminum. And then there's a sub chassis uh, with, uh, with switches. Uh, I could uh, 
unscrew one of those plates uh, to reveal what's uh, under it. Look at this! Spare no exchanges! It's spare no exchanges. Uh, make before break. Made of uh, sub solid uh, brass uh, contacts. Absolutely a thing of beauty and a joy forever. And uh, in this block, uh, we've got a uh, spring and uh, a ball bearing that engages with uh, with the notches uh, on the central, and then the central uh, part, then the cog. And if you take a closer look. If you take a closer look at this um, this part, uh, <coughs> you will see that uh, there's even a uh, grub screw and a knot that uh, adjusts uh, the pressure on the spring and on the ball. Every detail, uh, every teeny tiny detail uh, was well thought of. Uh, Clearly, some great engineering has uh, gone into this device. And I will be very happy to keep it and to use it uh, in my lab. It's gonna, it's gonna outlast me and uh, five future generations of electronic engineers. At least as long as uh, there are people to appreciate the stack and not to throw it out to trash. So that's how those switches are built. Now, can, now I can remove the whole assembly. Look at Look at this screw, it, uh, it was sealed. Temper, temper indication seal to warn that uh, the device has been messed with. And uh, probably discalibrated. And now the uplifting uh, experience of removing the resistance decade uh, from the enclosure. It clearly poses some resistance. It's not futile. Definitely far from futile. The plate is made of uh, insulating material. Look at this. Solid copper bars, all soldered. Wire wand resistors, all uh, impregnated uh, with uh, with enamel with uh, with lacquer uh, something like uh, like the one you see on old transformers so those pairs of contacts uh, the upper 
the upper pair of contacts uh, is connected uh, with uh, a bus bar unfortunately there is something missing looks like um, the decade has been uh, partly discombobulated but I hope that uh, then the discombobulation didn't uh, make it uh, useless, didn't make it uh, unusable. <coughs> this would be the lowest uh, resistance decade. Uh, this would be the 0.1 ohm range, this would be um, the times uh, times one ohm uh, every one of those resistors uh, it would be uh, one ohm 10 ohms each uh, 100 ohms each one kilo ohm each and uh, 10 kilo ohms each and looking at the resistors that have been removed I've got some bad news uh, that um, the kilo ohms range uh, it's not gonna work and I will have to fix it with uh, one kilo ohm uh, preferably five watt uh, resistors uh, almost breaks my heart to see it like uh, I really thought it would be fully capable and useful in my lab as uh, as the resistance decade, but there are also possible short circuits between the bus bars and and the resistors it might be a good idea to insulate uh, the bus bars so that they don't can come into contact with with the screws damn it i almost had it look at uh, look at those uh, copper rods they are the thing that connects uh, the resistors with uh, the contacts on uh, on the switches. So much copper went into it that if someone wanted to sell it to scrap, they would probably get a uh, decent amount of cash. And uh, that's also why it's so important to preserve uh, old technology like this. Those who build it, they spared no expense. If it can be done uh, a good way, they did it a good way. Absolutely a beautiful thing. This is a... Uh, This is uh, insulated with cotton. So the bottom contacts, uh, they connect the resistance decade. Those bypass it. If I put a shunt uh, on either side, uh, I can... Uh, lead the cables out uh, to the device under test or I can uh, lead the cables out uh, from uh, from both sides <coughs> and now let's take a look
turn them down to zero. Zero point one arm. I'm uh, fiddling with the times zero point one arm. Of course, uh, it might not uh, be accurate, uh, especially if you count into if you add the lead resistance uh, I wouldn't really trust it on uh, on the sub arm uh, setting but over one arm Tens of arms. Hundreds of arms. That's where the shenanigans are gonna happen. Kilo ohms, uh, we've got one kilo ohm, two kilos, three, and what beyond that? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Nothing! That's because of those removed resistors. I will have to restore the thing. And there might be also a problem with uh, tens of kilo ohms uh, range. Uh, looks like I've got an open contact. So here is uh, where some crap has happened. And I can uh, measure the individual resistors. Uh, the first one is, it's dead, it's, uh, it's open. Second one is okay. Third one is okay. Fourth one is okay. Fifth one is okay. Sixth one. Seventh one. Eighth one. Ninth one. And tenth one. So, one of those uh, 10k resistors is shot. I wonder if I could uh, do anything to to fix the problem.
doesn't look like burn marks on the resistor. But yeah, I will do it later. Anyway, it's a beautiful device. And that's gonna be a nice addition to my lab. So that was 20 old relays and a uh, real deal vintage uh, resistor decayed box um, that I'm gonna use in my lab uh, for testing the, um, the circuits. Uh, matching resistors whenever I need um, a, uh, a value for the resistor. I can use the decade box to to just uh, experiment with uh, different values. Uh, take, a, um, take a look at the scope and uh, observe the signals and um, and then uh, after, after I uh, chose one I can use a proper resistor in the circuit. That's how it was done, that's how it is done, and that's how it will be done. So, without further ado, stay determined and carry on. <laughs>